Hey guys, I'm Danny. And I'm EJ. And this is the Your Living Proof Podcast. Where we talk about addiction and how it affects the family. From the brutal to the beautiful and everything in between. Hey everybody, what's going on? And welcome back to the Your Living Proof Podcast. We're so excited to be recording again. Episode 62. That's right. 6-2. It, it does feel good. Gosh, that's that's a pretty significant number. It's 62? a lot. 62? It's a and lot that's of talking. Legit. It's like after being married for a certain amount of years, you're 15. like legit. Yeah. That's I us. know how many years we've been okay. married. I, was just I do know how many years. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. we're excited to be here today. Um, you know, yesterday was a big deal for us, and I'm sure a lot of you, whether it was yesterday or coming up shortly, is the beginning of school again. Yeah. It's all the feels, right? It is. Like, I was like so devastated. Like, I did not, I was actually <laughs> kind of mad. I was kind of happy. Like, I was looking forward <laughs> to having like some quiet and some. Some routine because summer was just so chaotic, but it is both good and bad. Yeah, for sure. It's just for a sure. major Structure adjustment. Structure is good. Yeah. We're hoping that it's the kickstart to like a new trend for our family. Yes, please. Because this summer was, what would we call it? Maybe the summer of The summer pain. of, yeah, of, of hospital bills. So if you took the last 10 years of our life and added everybody to the pot that had any type of injuries, operations... Births, Ho- hospitalizations, any type, right? Illnesses. We compiled more this summer in one summer than we have the last 10 years of our family life. Yep. Like literally in a matter of 12 weeks, we like outdid ourselves in a major way. <laughs> one of the years we had a good insurance policy too, because we've had plenty of years without it or with a terrible insurance. And this year, it's it true. Just, that was God's grace that we no, had a literally, good insurance policy. It was policy. like the biggest blessing. So we're hoping that's the case. Um, The end of summer got a little crazy and kind of fueled. If some of you are unaware, we kind of have this little, we're getting old and weird. I think in. Well, maybe you are. I mean. I'm for sure not. I'm still 25 and I've always been weird. So that's just it. Attractive and hip. (laughs) But we're getting older where we start to romanticize this idea, right? This idea of getting off the grid and moving to a place where there's no distractions, no technology, no pressure, no comparison. We're on a, a, like a, like a vineyard or a ranch or a farm. Yeah, no, a, a ranch. A ranch for sure. With, like with I want like 200 horses. An orchard. And, <laughs> and cattle and some baby doll sheep. And yeah, and no people, really. That's it. <laughs> some people might be like, you guys are crazy. <laughs> Chickens. But other people might be like, yeah, we kind of want that too. So yeah. anyway, there it is. It's That's a little us. bit of our dirty laundry. But I will tell you, and we're getting started, but my, <laughs> I, my wife's been sending me these ads like from like the classifieds or just There's ads nothing online. wrong with that. Yes, because every night I get these ads or these images or pictures or something for sale. And it's like, oh, look, there's a miniature donkey or a Highlander cow. Guys, or a everybody horse. wants a miniature donkey. Come on. Oh Come on. Whose life didn't improve She's when putting... they were walking a miniature donkey? Oh, it's, okay. it's like therapy. It, Come on. Some of it is, yes. But <laughs> she the amount of animals that she wants is the part that's a little overwhelming. So Yeah. It might Buckle be only, up, Dan. might be the only thing for Buckle keeping up. us to move into the farm. So Okay. Well, I want to introduce uh, introduce this topic okay. because uh, still to this day, you know, I get the same question all the time and it's like, what is it that you guys like do again? Like what is <laughs> it? Like how like who do you help? Like how does it work? What is it? And and so I literally said to Danny, I was like, we need to do an episode of the podcast where we just, we, even though we feel like we say it all the time, we're going to tell you guys, I'm going to put Danny on the spot with a bunch of questions that I get all the time. And I guarantee he gets them too. But, um, yeah, she just told me to be ready. Yeah. I'm like, we're just, I'm just going to be firing questions. So that's what we're going to do today. Um, if you've ever been on our, our website, you will see this everywhere. And, it, and it, it's our our deepest feelings about this topic, which is that the greatest threat in the world to addiction is a family who learns how to effectively intervene and how to support a full program of recovery. So if you ever wondered, like, what is Living Proof all about? That statement that I just said is exactly what we are about. That is why we exist. It is who we serve. So I just want to be super transparent. We're going to just kind of spitball a lot today. Um, Danny's just going to be on the hot seat. 
Mm-hmm. I'm going to ask him questions like I literally have no idea um, what, you know, his program is or what he does for a living or anything. So are you ready, Dan? Uh, go for it. Okay. Um, so first, who are you and why do you think you can tell me what I should do with my addicted loved one? I want to know. Why are you a person who I should talk to well, about I'm, this? I'm your man. I Pretend I'm not me. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> okay, so I've chosen to do this line of work first and foremost because I found that I'm very good at it. That's a fact. I did get licensed, certified to do this line of work. The, the, the avenue for that was like interventionist, things like that. Of course, I have called... Grad, graduated from college and have those type of credentials, but, yeah, I but think, what really qualifies I think what you? Re- okay, is having gone through it myself, and I do think a lot of people uh, when they go through a program of recovery, you know, they kind of get to a point where they desire to help other people, and that's been there for a lot of years. Um, of course, after I started recovery and started putting back the pieces of my life, I wanted to have a family and I met a beautiful woman and we had children and I had to make money because life costs money. So we did the restaurant business for quite a while and learned how yeah. to work really hard and learned that there's actually something harder than overcoming an addiction, which is working in the food business. But I gained a lot of experience in the length of my recovery because of my involvement at every level. Right. I've been incarcerated. I know what that whole program and systems like in and out of treatment centers, hospitals, detox centers, outpatient programs, the entire recovery program of going through and working the steps and improving yourself and then giving back and helping other people. What happened is there's this period of time where my life started to become beautiful and heal. And I had, I raised a family and I started talking to other families that were going through this and working through this so to answer your question, because I'm getting off track, I've been there. Yeah. As deep and dark as your loved one has gone, whether it's your child or your spouse, and you think it's now irreversible, you've given up hope. Yesterday I spoke to a few people, and that was the theme, is that they're just like, we've just given up hope. Mm. From being found dead in the basement of an abandoned home, well, clinging for life, all but physically dead, all the way to where I've got to this point has taught me some valuable lessons. So I combined them with getting trained and certified in this line of work, but (laughs) it's the practical aspect of being able to tell someone I know because I was there. Right. So I am no one special or significant, but when it comes to this specific thing, other than I'm a father and a husband, that's like, that's, that's something very significant. When it comes to this specific topic, I found to be uh, that I am the best and yeah. helping families yeah. figure out how in the world do we get through to them? What are we supposed to do? How can we influence the outcome? What are we going to, how, how do we help them? I think that's so incredible too, uh, just the angle that you take. Because even people that work in this industry are like, wait, you work with like the whole family to help them understand? Because we all know, like if you if you love somebody who's an addict, you know that like, Everywhere you go, there's a resource for an addict. Like, get help, get support. Here's a facility. Here's an outpatient program. Here's this, here's that. But for the person who loves that person and is hanging on for dear life, watching them just absolutely dumpster fire their life, it's it's a terrifying experience. And one that, like, first of all, a lot of people don't like to talk about. But second of all, really has little to no resources for Correct. support for, for them. So what you're, what you're saying is that's you saw that and you like literally decided you were going to become the resource for those people. Yeah. When we stepped out of the food business and I switched gears to wanting to do this line of work, I was trying to figure out the angle and it was very obvious. You know, I knelt down in prayer and I was really contemplating how can I be effective at helping? What can I do that will have the biggest impact in this massive problem? And it was looking back, realizing Wow. My addiction of many years came to a halt in a matter of many months once my family gained some tools and resources and learned how to effectively intervene. Right. They, they learned how that to was support the difference maker. you. Yes, yeah. that was the difference maker. So I looked at it that and I was like, you know what, this is really cool because, yes, I have certain credentials like graduated from college. I used to 
played the piano. I was an Eagle Scout. I served a mission for my church. And, oh, yeah, by the way, I've been in a jumpsuit, and I was a felon, and I was incarcerated, and I was yeah. homeless. Yeah. All the way back to the other side, which is now I am a pretty good dad and sometimes a good husband. You're a really good husband. <laughs> So it's being able to know both sides. Yeah. And be like, you know what? The best advocate, the person that's going to help you the most is your family, but they're just paralyzed, neutralized as to how. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. They are. And so I love this. I love that. That was a really good answer. Thank you for being thorough. Okay. okay I, my next one is, Danny, what, if you go to our website right now, it's like sign up for the living proof process. I want to know the raw answer to like, what is that? I don't want to read copy on a website. I want to know what, if I enroll in the living proof process, what do I get? What is that? Okay. Well, it's the playbook for families. And I know that's. Maybe so it's a... not for my, my son or my husband that's suffering. It's, it's not for them. No, it's for you. It's the family. It's the playbook. It's like the how to manual. And support of how do I make an impact? How do I make a difference? So what is it exactly? There's a series of modules, courses, right? You get all the material, which is like there's five modules. Each one has 15 to 20 different videos, segments, exercises lessons. that you go through, lessons, right? And we, we've spent a lot of time and money and resources like creating it in a way that was consumable and that somebody for the first freaking time – could comprehend what's being said, right? Like if you go... And right, talk because to, it's in layman's terms. Yes, it's in layman's terms for families because I always like to say this. When families are just frustrated, they they can't get through to their loved one, I'm just like, why should you know? Like right. why, why, why is it that you should know how to help someone in this situation had you not been through it yourself? Right. So it's the playbook that teaches them how. So to be very clear, because I, I like, you know, when I'm buying a car or anything, I just want to know like, what do I get? <laughs> what do What's I get? The, yeah. You get a series of courses that are yours forever. You can read them, watch them, share them with your, your spouse or your children that teach you how to go from A to Z. It okay. gives you the entire process of how to help your loved one. From from day one in the dumpster fire to... Supporting a full program of recovery. But here's the kicker. There are so many bumps along the way. So oh, yeah. many setbacks along the way. You've heard the word relapse. <laughs> we know the, what the term setbacks are. But you get, so you get these courses, you watch them, you consume them, they're yours forever. You get all the exercises to go with them to make sure that you're actually understanding it, how to create things. For example, there's a thing called the gift, which is what you're ultimately going to present your loved one. Now, the practical steps to preparing that so that you're ready, it gives you the exercise. It gives you the actual papers to yeah. write it out and have it complete. Simultaneously and instantly, you get access to support. I feel like the Living Proof process has the coolest community ever because you gain support. And what I mean by that is if you're a parent or a spouse and you're like, oh, my gosh, my child or, oh, my gosh, my husband, they're dealing with this. While you start learning in these courses, you get to get on the join a group twice a week. There's a group that's very strategic, a group where we just work through the courses. You can submit questions. I don't quite understand this. How do I do this? How do I get my insurance to help with this? There's a strategic group that walks through the process of how to be effective at getting your loved one the help they need. Simultaneously, every week, you get to join another community in the Living Proof process of healing. So a group of parents or a group of spouses that meet together, small groups, and they get to learn from one another, heal from one another. The purpose of that group isn't quite as strategic. The purpose of that group is for them. They talk about the trauma that they've experienced along the way, the abandonment that they felt. They work through the issues of distrust, like not being able to trust because of their love and the hurt that they felt. That the group fear. is, it's so powerful. We had yesterday, there was a group of, of moms and it, the power in that group was just unexplainable. They all like-minded people are hearing from one another the same struggles, the same challenges, the same fears, and the same hopes. And just to hear that from one another, to realize they're not alone, but to also have people calling them out and being like, hey, I was there. Don't do that. Yeah, that is through, powerful. I already went through that. Don't do that. So that's what it so is. So you're saying if you join the process, you're getting you're getting this amazing like 
course that you can watch anywhere, right? Like I'm assuming you just consume it on your computer or your phone, wherever you are. And then on top of that, you instantly get support through um, groups that are like Correct. weekly calls. Here's a good way to put it. You go to school, you don't, this isn't the textbook. Actually, you get the answer book. Yeah. Like that, it's kind of like key. the textbook with all the answers in it for the test. And then you get a private tutor. And then you get a, a, like a, a study group. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it that's is. It's really what it is. And so that, I mean, and, and you look at it, like people, in, when they enroll in the program, they get up to a year of this. So you're essentially getting 104 different type of support groups and yeah. strategy sessions of how to help your loved one. With a professional person. Meanwhile, who works you in have the, field. The, yeah. the playbook and the, the answer book in front of you. So that's what it is. Wow. That's actually amazing. And I love all of that, and it sounds super cool, <laughs> but but I'm just going to be super real with you. Um, what if, like, I, I love that there's people that that works for, but they're, my, my son, he doesn't want help. Mm. Like, that's the problem. It's like, what if your loved one doesn't want help? They don't think there's a problem. Like, how, how am I taking this course going to influence the outcome at all like i don't understand it's not even my problem it's i mean it's becoming my problem but it's really their problem so it just i don't understand that how would it help me so addiction doesn't play by any set of rules and quite honestly it doesn't make sense it is the only fatal illness on the face of the planet where people more often argue disagree fail to do something about than any others and where the sick person fights to stay sick so to answer your question specifically, if you don't figure out how to effectively intervene and do everything in your power to affect your loved one's situation, something or someone else will. All addictions are progressive. Nobody wants to believe it. Everyone thinks that they're going to be able to knock it off or some sort of circumstance or change of season or location is going to change it, but it won't. You already know that. It will be a judge a serious accident or death that will actually intervene unless it's you. So you think I need to be involved on a different level than I, I mean, cause I'm doing a lot. Like I, every day I'm like putting out fires for this person. And now you're saying I need to do even more. Well, first of all, they don't have a chance without you. The very nature of addiction is remove their ability to choose. You can argue me all you want on that fact, but they have lost their ability to choose. There was a time at the beginning, maybe many years ago when they were younger, where it was just some bad choices and they could have knocked it off or something to, something could have changed. But now you're at a place where they actually have the disease in their brain and it's rewired the way they process. So they are sick. And you hoping that this is just going to knock, they're going to knock it off or something's going to magically make this go away is, is why addiction dominates so many. When you learn. So here's, here's a saying that we always share in Living Proof. You can't get sick enough to help a sick person get better. It's only in thriving that you have anything to offer. This program will teach you specifically and strategically how to limit their choices other than getting help. Like you're going to corral them into like the most narrow situation where their only choice is I'm going to die from this or I'm going to get help. But you also learn how to set yourself free from the fear, the, the doubt, the blame, the hurt, the shame, all of those things that are just keeping you stuck and sucking you right down the path with them. I, I just have to say that that is one of the things that I love the most about what we do is we've all been in like a ship that we thought was sinking, right? Like in some shape or form in our lives, we've, we've been there. And what this program does is it truly allows you to, you're not going to get out of the ship. It's yeah. still going to be there and it's still going to be in a storm at sea, but you will figure out a way. You will find the footing to stay on that ship and not be puking your guts out the whole time. It's like it gives you this ability to transcend and access peace in the midst of the chaos, like, and, and eventually, you know, the chaos subsides, but it's like an immediate, like peace in that storm. 
which is so cool. And I've, I've had, we have so many testimonials on our website that are just super powerful about that exact thing, which I, I just love. So anyway, thank you for answering that. Yeah. Okay. But I have another one for you. Okay. Um, here's the thing. I don't want to talk to you about this. I want you to talk to my son. Like he's the one that has the problem and I'm honestly really tired of dealing with it. So if you could just talk to him, like, could you just maybe, you know, take him to lunch or something and just try to reason with him? Like you've been there before. So maybe you could just talk him into a different like mindset somehow. So you know them better than I do. And you already know how effective it's been because I guarantee you could win a Grammy for the, uh, is it an Emmy or Grammy? What's the word? Oscar. Like, Oscar. Like yeah, a, a performance music. when you're yeah. putting on a performance. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. I never keep any of those dumb things straight. <laughs> That's what I love about you. Okay. Well, you would win that award, whatever that award is, because of the time, the heroic efforts you've put into trying to convince him. Everybody's desperately done both where they've pleaded with them, right? Like you felt like with all the love, care, you've, you've written beautiful, even poetry to get their attention, or you've threatened them with everything that you're going to leave and nothing worked. So no, I, I don't want to talk to them because trying to talk to them, <laughs> you've already realized how, how that doesn't work. Okay, fine. It stems back to my very first answer. When a family effectively learns to intervene, it changes everything. My addiction in many years came to an abrupt halt in a matter of months when my family learned how to do this. Yeah. I, an and, addiction that was eight years strong. And I've taken what they learned and added all the missing pieces that that's the power of this. And I'll just be transparent. You said we want to get real and transparent. This doesn't apply to everybody. Okay? Yeah. This program does not work for everyone. I'm there... glad you're saying this because that was one of my questions. Okay. Cause there's tens of millions of people out there dealing with addictions and it breaks my heart. Like it actually hurts inside my heart that have no chance. Their backs are against the wall. They come from a broken home. They have no financial resources. Their dad's an alcoholic. They're, they're in these situations where they have very limited options and very limited people who can or want to help them. So I, I wish there was a one size fits all or a one answer to help solve all the problems. But what I said is I'm going out there and I'm putting a program out there. I need to be very specific in what I'm doing to actually be impactful and effective. And that's finding families. Okay. We all know our families are a jumbled mess. We have yeah. problems. We all have our little skeletons and challenges. Yeah, and we're all broken in lots But of I'm ways. looking for families to describe it that are God-fearing people. And if they're not, they're just good people who have some sort of moral structure, people who have had an education, people who have some means to help, even if it's just a small amount. But those people who are wanting and desiring to help. Yeah, who are, are searching as they're trying to fall asleep at night who just, for a solution. Who just can't give up. Those are the people I'm trying to help and empower. Learn how to do this, how to give your loved one no other choice. But ultimately, it's when the family learns how to do this, when the family comes together, when you take the person that's being naive or the person that's angry or the person that's enabling everything or the person that's resentful and you bring them together, it changes. Now, is it 100%? No, but it is sure as heck a lot better than the dismal 7% of people that recover. When a family comes together, the person that's struggling with their addiction, usually over time, whether it's like a week or a year, they give in and they get help. Why? Because there's help available. Yeah. And the people that love and care them are there ready to support them. Well, but and they have a plan. They have a plan. And it it changes everything. But that is that is the one difference. It doesn't work for everyone. If someone's just like, you know what? Go back to your question. There are people who have reached out and said, you know, I'm just too busy. My husband's always gone. I don't really know what to do. I don't want to talk to them anymore. I just need you to talk to them. I'm sorry. This doesn't work. Yeah. This program it requires you. you. And I share with people, let's just say what the elephant in the room is. Okay. There's an elephant in the room with this program and with your help. And that is, it's not fair. Yeah, it's not. It's not fair. Every new client I get, I say, let's just get this out on the table right now. It's not fair. This is actually completely backwards. Yeah. One woman yesterday, sorry, mom, just said, yeah, it's bullshit. 
that I'm doing this, that I'm spending my time, that I'm looking into these things and I'm trying to help. And they're just fighting me to stay in my basement, living in constant paranoia. So the elephant in the room is, yes, it's not fair. Yeah. Your loved one did this. They put you in this situation. But the truth is the hard pill of the swallow, they can't do it without your help. And if you don't learn how to effectively do it, you're just going to continue to contribute to the to the problem. Yeah. Sorry, I went off there. No, that's good. Um, okay. Well, I'm almost like I'm I'm very interested at this point, but I kind of I'm a person that needs guarantees. So what's the guarantee um with your program? Do you have a guarantee that if I enroll in this that my loved one will be healed and cured and I'll get them back? <laughs> well, I'm not, I don't know many magic tricks. I'm not a sorcerer. Dang. I'm very well aware that I can't play any sort of role of God. Okay. So no, there's no guarantee. But the closest thing, right? We'll use the word closest. Like if there's something that's very close to a guarantee, it's that you and your family will be set free of fear, doubt, guilt, blame, and you will stop reacting to all this insanity. So, yes, you have a loved one who's suffering. Their life is in jeopardy. You can see where this is going, and maybe it's already the point where they're clinging for life. But the turmoil and destruction that's happened to the family stops. Because for the first time, the family's following this playbook. They're making plays. They're doing moves, right? Yeah. They're making moves. And they're doing it together because now they understand how. They understand what it's going to take for their loved one to get help. They understand what it's going to take from them all the sacrifices they're going to have to make. So when a family does this, they actually come together in the most powerful way. Yeah. Because they're they're coming together, rallying the resources, learning together, setting their emotions and feelings aside and saying, okay, this is what we're going to do, guys. Here's all the ways we're going to help and support them. Here's what we're going to ask for them to do. And by doing that, they stop enabling. They stop reacting out of fear. They stop giving in to these pleas of, oh, I'm cold. Please help me with this. Just pay my phone bill one more month. Let me stay at your house one more time. Whatever it is, they can stop contributing to the problem and actually find the tactical way to corral them again, like we said, into getting help. And guess what? Once they do, they have a chance. This is my favorite part about the living proof process. When the family does this, that person struggling, which once was me, and I've watched this story unfold so many times now, and I know that it works, is that person has a chance. Because if they finally just wave the white, white flag, and what they often do when a family comes together and does this process this is what happens. Usually when they present it to their loved one, their loved one's like, screw you guys. I'm not doing that. No way. That's ridiculous. They don't hear from them. That's the part that's hard. Yeah. And it could be a few hours. It could be a few weeks. could be a few months. But all, almost often at some point, something bad happens. Something scary happens. They run out of, out of options. And the family gets this response. It's almost verbatim every time. Fine. <sighs> I'll go do your stupid program. There Usually you more more explicit words, but <laughs> I'll go do your stupid program. Where, what's that stupid place? There it is. Wow. And guess what? A family is empowered. Not only what a stupid place they're going, but like what's after that? How do we support you the next step? What are we going to require of you to do? And how are we going to help make the impossible possible and support you with this, this, and this? How long should we do that for? Well, what should we do if this happens? Or what should we do if all of a sudden they start to slip up here? You're already, you, you, you you already have the, know the answer. Yeah. You're already prepared for all of that. So you're reacting so much differently. Now you're playing offense instead of defense. I love that. And one of the things that I actually love about that is like, we all, like, in addiction, the families are the collateral damage. They just are like it starts in one person, but every single person in the family gets sick along the way. And usually you end up turning on each other. Yeah. And really, it's because of difference of opinion. Like yep. you start arguing with your spouse about how to handle it. And then there's a, you know, a million miles between you. And then that puts puts tension in your home and then your other children are suffering and so on and so forth. And so what what I love about this is regardless of that fact, because it's going to be a fact in every home. Yep. This program allows people to set that aside for a common interest, and it literally teaches them how to unite and tactically approach this. Even if they still have differing opinions on what's right and what's wrong, 
you are almost like the mediator and the middle ground there that like helps them connect and, and make progress instead of just continue to battle each other until, you know, everyone's lost. Correct. In the last, in the last 16 plus years of my recovery, I've heard and witnessed miracles. I've seen so many people that were in places just as bad or close to as bad as I was, who are now just the most amazing people like running successful businesses, like leaders in their community and church and all these different things. Yes, all of us came from different backgrounds, right? Like all of us had different situations. Our families were all different. But there's one thing. It's what you just talked about, common ground. There's one thing that myself and every other person I've met who's in long-term recovery. That's different, right? Someone could be in prison for 10 years and be clean, sober, sober for 10 years. Yeah. Those that are in long-term recovery, meaning you've now learned because of what you went through how to become the best version of yourself. Yeah. You've taken all the necessary steps to strip yourself down, to humble yourself, to ask Which, for help, to learn and grow. That's the goal of the, this program Yes, is recovery, not sobriety. The one thing that everyone has in common, that common ground you just mentioned, is that there were people there to help them. That's it. So I don't care what your family looks like, how you compare yourself to other families. Everybody in long-term recovery made it because they had a team of people around that learned how to stop supporting the addiction and how to stand strong against it. The scary part, if we're going to be real and give you the the, the, tr the truth you don't want to hear, is there are many who don't. There are families who do this so well. They come together. They rally the re their resources together. They, they unite. They find options. They learn how to help. They educate themselves. And their loved one goes, maybe overdoses and dies. Maybe commits a crime and gets incarcerated. There isn't always a storybook ending. But even those families that had those tragic endings, they live with a different kind of pain, right? It's, yeah. it's sadness for losing their loved one. But it's the joy that they came together, learned, stopped burying their head in the stand, stopped praying for a miracle, stopped waiting for a magical day that was never going to come. And they actually planned, prepared, and educated themselves. And they came together. Yeah. Well, and then at that point, you can you can definitely feel the pain and the loss, but you don't feel the regret. Yeah. You don't have to live with regret because you know yeah. That you did everything, yeah. everything. You covered every inch of the field. And so that is, that's super powerful. Yeah. Um, one last question is. Okay, good. I was wondering how many. You sorry, had. one more. It's just like, how long is this going to take? Because I need an answer like now. Like I need, I need this to be fixed yesterday. I'm done dealing with this. So how long is this going to okay, take? Okay, that's the best one. Because most of the time I talk to people, not all the time, but all, most of the time. Oh my gosh, I got to have, this is what happened. Last night they got really drunk and did this, or I found them passed out with this, and they're coming home from work in, in, in an hour, and what am I going to do and say? Yes, it's like, I'm on fire. Yeah. Please put the fire out. Yeah. Or they just got in an accident, and they're in the hospital, and I have to go see them. What am I going to say? Yeah. It's always like that. <laughs> it is. I'm, that's, I actually that's love it, though. Story. I love, like, real, raw, intense situations. But here's the answer to that. Yesterday, in a group, there's five, I think there were Five spouses, mm -hmm. okay, who all have a spouse at a different stage. Someone had just put together this this gift, this plan. They'd set a boundary and re and remove themselves from the environment. There's someone else whose loved one is actually in treatment right now. There was someone else whose loved one was like four months down the road in their recovery. Each one of them still dealing with different unique challenges yeah so the program supports you whether you're just starting and wondering how to make any sense of this if you're just starting wondering is there any hope or if you're in it even if your loved one's gone and received support and some sort of behavioral health program and they're putting their foot forward and trying it continues to teach you so the program lasts and works for as long as you need it that's a great answer and once you've had success with this, then down the road, there's opportunities to guess what? What? Give back. I love that. A year down the road when you're out of this hell hole that you're in, whether or not your loved one gets healthy, if they do, we know how much better that is. But even if they don't, you will become a better person. You'll become free of doubt, guilt, blame, shame. 
and you'll be a stronger person because of this. And you'll have a chance to help other people who are in that hopeless place. Which has got to be one of the coolest aspects of it all. Yeah. That's so, so I'm powerful. glad you asked those questions. I, I know that this is the missing piece. And I also will be humble enough to say I know this doesn't work for everyone. As I mentioned before, there are dynamics, families, people who just don't have the time or desire to help or maybe just the ability, right? Yeah. But for those of you out there that do, this is the answer you've been looking for. It is. It, to sum it up, it will save your marriage. It will save your family, regardless of what your loved one chooses. But also, I can say with confidence, it will give them their single best chance. Not at getting them to go into detox and then come home thinking they're cured, but to give them a ch real chance at recovering. Allowing this hell to become the thing that makes them the best, most polished version of themselves. That's it. I love that. And I want to say, if you're, if you're like, wow, this is really interesting, I want to know more, please go to our website. We, ha we made a master class that is free. You can take 30 minutes of your time or put it on, you know, faster. Yeah, well, if people wonder what a master class is, everyone heard the term. But it's yeah. just like it's a thought out prepared like course that'll just give you some really good tools yep it's danny it's just danny talking to you to to you and your specific circumstance that you are dealing with right now i i promise if you take the time to watch it you will you will feel more seen than you have felt in a great long time and then the other thing is we are not going to leave without saying the serenity prayer for families correct um which is god grant me the serenity to accept that I cannot change other people, the courage to change the person that I can, and the wisdom to know that that is me. We're here for you. Reach out if we can help. Go to the website. Empower yourself. Some of the free resources we have. We appreciate you supporting us, listening to us, and sharing this message with someone who needs it. Have a great week.